The aircraft carrier is the largest integrated seagoing combat platform ever built, combining a floating airbase, command center, and logistics hub into one mobile unit. Carriers enable nations to project military power far from their borders, to support humanitarian relief, and to act as a visible symbol of state presence. A carrier operates alongside escort ships, submarines, and support vessels, forming a carrier strike group that brings layered defense, reconnaissance, and strike capability. The embarked air wing provides reach and flexibility, while carrier command facilities coordinate complex operations across air, surface, and subsurface domains. Modern carriers depend on vast supply chains, extensive maintenance facilities, and specialized personnel, making them expensive to build and operate. However, that investment buys endurance, mobility, and concentrated combat potential. In peacetime, carriers support diplomacy, training, and security missions, while in crises, they offer rapid, sovereign basing for aircraft and sensors. Technological advances in sensors, networks, and weapons continue to shape carrier roles, as navies adapt tactics and force packages to emerging threats, new aircraft types, and changing operational concepts, ensuring carriers remain central to how many states plan and execute maritime operations into the future and influence outcomes across distant theaters. An aircraft carrier is designed primarily as an offensive platform, yet its survival depends on a sophisticated defensive network. Because it cannot maneuver as quickly as smaller ships, the carrier relies on multiple defensive layers to intercept threats before they reach it. These defenses combine automated sensors, guided missiles, and rapid-fire guns that form overlapping protective zones. At the core of this system is the coordination between radar, combat information centers, and point defense weapons. The carrier's defensive armament is meant to stop everything from supersonic sea-skimming missiles to small attack boats attempting to close in. The RIM-162 Evolved Sea Sparrow missile provides a medium-range shield against aircraft and anti-ship missiles. Using semi-active radar guidance, it can engage multiple targets with precision. Closer in, the RIM-116 Rolling Airframe Missile System acts as the ship's quick reaction interceptor. It locks onto infrared or radar signatures of incoming missiles, engaging them moments before impact. For the last line of defense, the Phalanx Close-In Weapon System employs a radar-controlled 20mm Gatling cannon that fires thousands of tungsten rounds per minute, creating a dense curtain of metal. Supplementing these are Mark 38 25mm chain guns and .50 caliber machine guns, providing flexible protection against fast-moving surface craft and low-level aerial threats. Missile defense forms one of the most critical layers in a carrier's protection network. Modern anti-ship missiles travel at high speeds, some at sea-skimming altitudes, and others in steep terminal dives, making interception a complex task. To counter these threats, carriers employ a mix of sensors and interceptors designed to engage missiles at varying distances. The RIM-162 Evolved Sea Sparrow Missile ESSM is the mainstay of medium-range protection. It uses semi-active radar homing and high maneuverability to engage threats before they enter close proximity. Typically launched from vertical launch systems aboard escort ships or from the carrier's own launchers, the ESSM can defeat supersonic and highly agile targets. As threats close in, the RIM-116 Rolling Airframe Missile RAM provides the next layer. The RAM's infrared and radar homing capabilities allow it to react autonomously within seconds, targeting missiles or aircraft that slip through the outer shield. It is a lightweight, fast-reacting system with an exceptional hit probability. Together, the ESSM and RAM form a responsive network that links to the carrier's combat management systems, 
which continuously evaluate radar data and prioritize incoming threats. This multi-tiered defense ensures that the carrier remains capable of defending itself even under saturation missile attacks. If hostile weapons manage to bypass the outer missile layers, the carrier's close-in systems engage as the last barrier between the ship and destruction. These weapons rely on rapid detection, automatic tracking, and intense rates of fire to neutralize threats at extremely short ranges. The most recognized system in this category is the Phalanx Close-In Weapon System, a 20mm Gatling-type cannon controlled entirely by radar. Once activated, it searches for fast-moving objects, locks onto them, and unleashes up to 4,500 rounds per minute of armor-piercing tungsten projectiles. The goal is to create a concentrated zone of fire that shreds or deflects an incoming missile before impact. In addition to the Phalanx, carriers mount the MK-38 25mm machine gun system. Operated manually or remotely, this weapon provides flexible engagement capability against small boats, drones, and other surface threats. Its stabilized mount and integrated sensors enable accurate fire even in rough seas. Complementing these are the .50 caliber machine guns positioned along the flight deck and sponsons, manned during heightened alert to counter low-speed or asymmetric attacks. This blend of automated and crew-served systems gives the carrier multiple options to respond instantly, preserving the ship's integrity when threats are already within lethal range. While physical weapons destroy threats directly, electronic warfare systems protect the carrier by deceiving and disrupting enemy sensors and guidance systems. These soft kill measures play a vital role when missiles or torpedoes rely on radar, infrared, or acoustic homing. The AN-SLQ-32 Electronic Warfare Suite forms the foundation of this layer. It detects radar emissions from approaching threats, identifies their type, and can jam or mislead the signals. By distorting what enemy sensors perceive, it prevents accurate targeting and buys precious time for other defenses to react. To counter torpedo attacks, the AN-SLQ-25 Nixie system tows an acoustic decoy behind the ship. This device emits signals that mimic the carrier's acoustic signature, luring homing torpedoes away. For aerial threats, the MK-36SRBOC Super Rapid Bloom Offboard Countermeasures system launches chaff and flares in rapid succession. Chaff disperses metallic fibers that confuse radar-guided missiles, while flares divert infrared seekers. These countermeasures create multiple false targets, overwhelming the tracking capabilities of hostile weapons. When combined, the Electronic Suite, Torpedo Decoy, and SRBOC Launcher form a cohesive defense that reduces the likelihood of a successful strike, ensuring the carrier can continue its mission even when under complex, multi-directional attack. The aircraft embarked on a carrier provide most of its punch, and they extend the strike group's reach beyond the ship. A carrier air wing combines fighters, electronic attack aircraft, early warning planes, helicopters, and unmanned platforms, each with mission-specific loadouts and sensors. Fighters engage enemy aircraft, suppress air defenses, and prosecute strike packages with precision munitions. Electronic attack aircraft degrade hostile radars and communications, creating openings for manned fighters to penetrate defended airspace. Airborne early warning aircraft act as the group's eyes, supplying long-range detection, command and control, and battle management. Helicopters handle anti-submarine warfare, search and rescue, logistics and surface attack when required. Unmanned systems perform intelligence gathering, aerial refueling, and strike support in some programs. Together, the wing's aircraft can carry air-to-air -air missiles, air-to-surface missiles, guided bombs, torpedoes, and targeting pods. The mix of platforms ensures flexibility, enabling carriers to switch from intense combat to humanitarian assistance. Training, maintenance, and coordinated sortie generation are essential to sustaining high-tempo operations, making the air wing the carrier's primary offensive and defensive multiplier. Effective logistics and skilled crews keep sorties ready and mission-capable at sea. 
carrier-based fighters bring both air superiority and precision strike capability to naval operations. The FA-18EF Super Hornet remains the backbone of most carrier air wings, supported by the newer F-35C Lightning II, which adds stealth and advanced sensors. Both aircraft can switch from defending the fleet to striking enemy targets on short notice. Their air-to-air -air armament includes AIM-120 AMRAAM and AIM-9X Sidewinder missiles, giving them reach and agility in aerial engagements. Against ground and maritime targets, they carry air-to-surface weapons such as the AGM-88H ARM for radar suppression and the AGM-154 or AGM-158 for long-range precision strikes. For guided bombing, these fighters employ laser and GPS-guided weapons like the JDAM and Paveway series, which deliver accuracy within meters of the intended target. The EA-18G Growler, derived from the Super Hornet, provides electronic attack support using jamming pods and anti-radiation missiles to neutralize enemy radars. Together, these aircraft enable the carrier to dominate both airspace and surface areas over hundreds of miles. Their integration with surveillance assets and tanker support allows sustained combat operations, giving the strike group the power to engage high-value targets on land or at sea while maintaining defensive coverage for the carrier itself. Helicopters and unmanned aircraft extend a carrier's reach beneath the waves, across the surface, and into the sky. The MH-60R Seahawk focuses on anti-submarine and anti-surface missions, using dipping sonar, sonobuoys, and the MK-54 lightweight torpedo to locate and destroy submarines before they approach the strike group. It can also employ Hellfire missiles and 7.62 mm machine guns against small vessels and fast attack craft. The MH-60S Nighthawk supports logistics, search and rescue, and surface attack, often ferrying supplies or personnel between ships while remaining ready for defensive duties. Their ability to deploy quickly from the carrier's hangar deck or flight line gives them unmatched flexibility for both combat and support operations. Complementing these helicopters is the MQ-25 Stingray, the first carrier-based unmanned tanker. Designed to extend the range of FA-18S and F-35CS, it will free manned aircraft from refueling duties and enable longer patrols or deeper strike missions. As autonomous systems mature, future UAVS will likely handle surveillance, electronic warfare, and strike missions alongside manned aircraft. Together, these rotary and unmanned platforms complete the carrier's layered defense and offense, reinforcing its endurance and maintaining control of air, surface, and subsurface domains during prolonged maritime operations.